Kirkland to Kirkland. I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Ghostland, and welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We are taping on Tuesday, the 20th of October. All Things is produced at Orca Media's in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. And now that Linda's going to tempt you with some headlines. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> My headlines are as follows. Whitman Walker Health in D.C. plans a virtual walk to end HIV. This is their 40th, 34th annual fundraiser. Biden denounces going, ongoing violence against transgender people and says it's unacceptable. I'll have more about that. Amy Cowood Barrett won't budge from no comment on whether she'd overturn same-sex marriage. We will have more about her, although I think we've had enough. I've had I, enough. I was going to say, I thought you could just say her name and said her comment of no budge and leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Puerto Rico Medicare, Medicaid program now covers transgender-related health issues. Monica Roberts, the, tra uh, the trailblazing black transgender activist, dies at 58. She was born and raised in Houston and was... Founding editor of Trans Transgriot. Grio. Grio? Transgrio. Folk tale. Oh. Grio. Oh, okay. A blog that highlighted trans specific issues. Gay Man provi uh, provides help to LGBTQ asylum seekers in Mexico. We'll have more about that. Joint Free State Justice on October 26th for their first LGBTQ book club. The first book being read is Martin Duber's book titled... Duberman. Is it Duberman? Yes. Yeah, okay, Duberman's book, sorry. Who titled, we like. That's yes, right. <laughs> titled, Has the Gay Movement Failed? So that'll be well, their first book. That's an old book. He just published a book about Andrea Dworkin. Well, I know, but... That's an old book. In fact, I think Keith bought it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. but well, that's, that's their first book. Read. That's what they're going to read, okay. whether it's old or not. <clears throat> uh, trans author makes New York Times bestseller list with his book Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas and is about a 16-year-old, it's young adult, trans guy who wants to prove to his family and community that he is a brujo. And Ann and I looked that up. And that is like wizard, wizard or sorcerer. A wizard or sorcerer. Okay. Hulu's Superman series, Hellstorm, features a messy gay romance. A gay, a gay live action Green Lantern series <clears throat> is coming on HBO Max. Yes. A Texas rule lets social workers turn away clients that are LGBTQ or have a disability. Can you believe that? Mm. I think that's against social work um, ethics. I don't think you can. I hope it's overturned. Anyway. Yeah, but there's a. Not by the Supreme Court. I was going to say there's a similar case before the U.S. Supreme Court that they're going to hear in November. I thought they had some code of conduct that they had to follow. No? Okay. 32nd murder shatters record for trans murders this year. <clears throat> Others raises $2 million in an LGBTQ fundraiser. We'll have more of that. And can anybody tell me October 4th was Happy National Pie in the Face Day? Oh, I that? didn't observe it. <laughs> if I'd known. Uh, yes. <laughs> what was it? I don't know. You know? Oh, I thought you were saying it was National Pie Day. No, it was National Pie in the Face Day. And what is that symbolic of Florida? Anita Bryant. Yes. Squeeze a fruit for Anita. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We remember oh. that. So that's it is. October 14th. Happy I Pie I... in the face, face Day. Oh, oh. The only person whose face I could have put a pie in was yours. So <laughs> I'm glad I didn't observe it. We don't have any pies on hand. And, you know, it was only Anita Bryant who deserved one. Yes. In my so group. now you go ahead now with uh, Poland and... Uh, yeah, well, okay. sure. Again. I'll start with world news <laughs> involving um, 
World Rugby, which has ruled that trans women cannot participate in elite female teams. Um, a world record has been set by New Zealand, which overtakes the UK's title for the most rainbow parliament. So that's very... Um, and she was just re-elected, right? Yes. Yeah, by a landslide. Absolutely. And so in the UK, there are 45 openly rainbow members in the 650-member House of Commons. Mm. But in New Zealand, um, the results show that there are likely to be two openly lesbian, 12 openly lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer members in the 120-seat next parliament. So, um, let's move. Now I've organized, um, I've done world news quickly, but I've organized the rest of the stories by continent and parts of <laughs> continent. So let's start with Western Europe. Jeez, unbelievable. Following um, the UK lead that was just mentioned, the court uh, in the UK is hearing a divisive case over trans kids' right to puberty-blocking drugs. And this is a big furor. Um, the opposition argues kids aren't old enough to know uh, whether or not they're transitioning. And uh, the supporters of the puberty-blocking drugs say that um, they're not irreversible and that many fewer suicides occur among teens who are taking puberty blockers. So the case is up in the air, but the debate is raging in the UK. Um, good news, the French government unveils a national plan to combat hatred against LGBT people, and they're following Britain's legislative lead on that score. And I have a picture before you now of French junior minister of gender equality, Elizabeth Marino, and she's spearheading this um, project which involves um, raising consciousness in the schools, talking to teachers, um, a whole range of positive applications, some of which are already in place. Um, let's move to Africa. Mixed views from there. In Algeria, there were mass convictions for homosexuality. What happened was there was a party um, and this is so outrageous. It was raided by the police. Um, 44 people were arrested. Uh, 44 people were convicted of same-sex relations, public indecency, and subjecting others to harm. Um, the hook was that they were breaking COVID-19 measures. Um, a private residence was raided in July. Um, nine women and 35 men, most of them university students, were arrested. This <coughs> occurred in northeastern Algeria. Uh, this is, what a pretext. The court used police reports describing decorations, flowers, and sweets indicative of a wedding celebration and the men's supposedly gay appearance as evidence of guilt. In Algeria, same-sex relations are publishable under an article of the penal, penal, penal code of up to two years in prison. Additionally, another article increases the penalty for public indecency to, from six months to three years uh, in organizations in Algeria. So they've also banned all pro-LGBT organizations. Um, so, bad news there. Two people, um, if I'm not mistaken, two men were sentenced to prison terms and 42 others had suspended sentences after this arrest. Mm. Better news uh, from Africa involves a Kenyan filmmaker who hopes to follow in Hollywood's LGBTQ footsteps. And I'm gonna do my first segment exploring that and I have a clip for you to see. Uh, now let's move on to Eastern Europe, which is a mixed bag. Um, the Hungarian government 
is calling a new children's book Homosexual Propaganda, and that is causing a stir. Um, the book is Wonderland is for Everyone, and the flag was that it's been published by a lesbian publisher, La Brise Lesbian Association, and it's basically 12 stories of, uh, you know, coming of age stories. It's been uh, Victor Orban, who's been in power, the prime minister, or the head of the government, who's been in power since 2010, uh, has condemned it. The first 1,500 copies of the book, which contains 17 background uh, stories of characters with various social backgrounds, sold out. So the first edition sold out. The Hungarian Publishers and Booksellers Association said several bookshops had been threatened and become the target of hate mongering. Leave the bookshops alone, the Hungarian Publishers Association said, uh -huh. rejecting the condemnation of the book. And this article is interesting because Hungary is under fire, but even though uh, they're making right they're making right-wing noise like this, they're quick to dissociate themselves from Poland. Um, and let's go to Poland now, <laughs> inevitably, where, uh, and this really is kind of outrageous. The um, 2023 games have been scheduled. Um, it's... it's Olympic the, games? No, the, no, it's a... Um, the latest international, it's a regional Olympic event, and it shows the city of Krakow and the surrounding Malopolska region to host the event. Um, and the thing about Malopolska is that it's in an LGBT-free zone. So this is an outrageous breach. The European Union is up in arms. Um, so that's what's going on in Poland. There's another bad story, but I chose to, I'll tell you next time if it persists. Um, one more, there's good news actually from Eastern Europe in Georgia, where uh, in 2009, the police went into this uh, LGBT um, office and they didn't have a, a reason um, to, there was no, uh, provocation, no provocation, no, and the, they didn't have a warrant. That's the <coughs> word I watch, Law and Order, I should know yeah. these words. Um, <laughs> they didn't have a warrant. <laughs> so, um, the European Court of Human Rights has found that the police were unjustifiable in doing it. There's a culture clash in Georgia between liberal forces and religious conservatives. Uh, that's been going on for the last 10 years. Um, they humili these cops went in Welcome without to our a, world. <laughs> without a warrant, uh, humiliated LGBT plus activists, strip searched them. Um, they found pot in the desk drawer of the <gasps> leader of the group. Uh, I know. <laughs> Nearly all the women were told to undress, uh, but the police did not search the clothes they were told to take off. Uh, in 2010, two of them filed a complaint of abuse with local authorities, and the complaint was upheld. So this court has said, after 11 years, one of the complainants said, after 11 years, I feel that justice is in place. The court awarded her and her fellow complainants $2,000 each in damages and uh, rights campaigners hailed the ruling. Oh. Good news from Georgia, although belated. Um, Pussy Riot has been arrested in a well-publicized arrest. Um, in, uh, they wanted to celebrate Vladimir Putin's 68th birthday, so they put up uh, rainbow pride flags all around <laughs> in city buildings and so forth. Um, one of their number is detained now. Uh, the police has broken into his home. Uh, now he's in the police station 
facing 30 days of arrest, four other activists who participated, it was called a rainbow flag action. They were detained but were released. Um, and now- I'm surprised they're still alive. The, good for them, you know, <coughs> oh, persistence. Yeah. Uh, there's so many um, tales of courage uh, in the news. Um, I'd like to go to Asia now, and I have a clip that I want to show you about lesbians in Iran. That'll be in my third segment. Um, but speaking of courage, I'd like to introduce you to... Um, <laughs> <laughs> to us all, but really. <laughs> We're not in Myanmar running for office, oh, which is goodness. the subject of this particular <laughs> article. His name is Mio Min Htun, H-T-U-N. He's 39. I have a picture before you now. He says, I don't want to lie. And things are very uh, difficult, as you may imagine, in Myanmar. And so he's running off for office to raise visibility, but he says... It's too soon to fight the battle to decriminalize same-sex relations. So, good for him. Yeah. And finally, Korean singer, and we have a picture before you now of him, uh, Kwon Do Woon has come out as gay. And he's uh, one of the first major South Korean male celebrities to publicly come out in years. He did it in the 10th year anniversary of his official debut. He's mostly known for singing trot music, which is a genre popular in South Korea. Um, and he said, I can afford to do it, so I'm going to do it now. Well, so good for him. Good for him. Absolutely. Those are my headlines. All right. So let me turn to the next trailblazer, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ghostland. <laughs> so this week's trivia question. This lesbian activist was the Poet of the Year and Poet Laureate of Wisconsin and was the recipient of the first Wicked Woman Book Prize. Who might that be? I want to start by acknowledging that we just passed the 22nd anniversary of the murder of Matthew Shepard. And as Linda has pointed out, our communities are still under siege. There have been 32 documented homicides of transgender people in the U.S. so far, which surpasses any other year on record. Zach is now going to show you a picture of a lovely group of young men wearing some very festive attire. This is from the New Frontier College in Canada. <laughs> and a hundred young men showed up wearing skirts in protest of a sexist dress code. And their language was wonderful. You know, they talked about double standard on the way society views our women and men. The moment a man wears something deemed feminine, put on nail polish, whatever, he gets insulted. People will say he's not a real man and will automatically assume his sexual orientation. By wearing a skirt, we are united together against the sexualization of women and we're sending a message against toxic masculinity, we keep, which keeps boys from being who they truly are without judgment. Yes. And apparently... This caught on, yeah. and it wasn't just this school, but it started a nationwide trend. I saw some pictures with guys with suits and tops and shirts and ties and skirts and high heels. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's my boys. <laughs> um, as time allows, <coughs> I will talk about the election. Don't worry. Don't worry, okay. Good. I'm reassured. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be talking. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, there we are. I want to remind people that this is Medicare open enrollment, October 15th, December 7th. It is also open enrollment for the ACA, Obamacare, which until the Supreme Court hears the argument and issues a final ruling, which probably won't be until next spring, 
is still the law of the land. So that open enrollment is November 1st to December 15th. I'm going to say this one more time about the Boy Scouts filing bankruptcy. And if you are somebody who was abused while you were in the Boy Scouts, you're entitled to be included in this bankruptcy lawsuit. But you're going to need to find legal representation. And there are so there's no class action about that. No, well, no, it is. But you need to find a law practice that will include you in what in the they are filing. And the reason I'm really pushing this is they finally released the Boy Scouts' assets, which may be as much as $10 billion. Ooh. I'm not surprised. Is that because their association with the uh, Mormons? The answer, is, the answer is I don't know, yeah. but they have, they're filing bankruptcy. If and they have all this money. And they have this money, and if you are somebody who was subject to abuse in the Boy Scouts, you're entitled to all be right. part of this suit. October Domestic Violence Awareness Month, there is a virtual vigil and speak out that's happening on Thursday, October 29th. You can go on the Safe Space site on the Pride Center to get details. If you would like to be included in the speak out section, they're asking people to please register. They're also encouraging people that if you're going to be putting a statement out on Domestic Violence Awareness Day and you're doing something in recognition of a survivor that you please get the survivor's permission to use their name. This is LGBTQ History Month. Campus Pride made a list of their best of the best <laughs> lists of colleges and universities. Uh -huh. Four of them were in New England. Tufts, MIT, UMass Amherst, in the University of Vermont. Ah. So, Zach is now going to show you a picture of Geo Sakama Neptune <laughs> Passamaquoddy, the first openly transgender person elected to a public position in the state of Maine. <laughs> and he was elected to the equivalent of a school board. <coughs> and they are from the Passamaquoddy tribe. Ah. So, Worcester, Mass. They have an ordinance now that you, every building has to have at least one gender-neutral bathroom, and this is inclusive of all buildings open to the public, schools and libraries. Nice. New Hampshire. Governor Sununu signed into law a new adoption reform bill that oh my, looks like Vermont's parentage bill that we did two years ago. And it was promoted by Polly Krosner from GLAD in Boston, who uh -huh. was the person who worked with the Alliance here on getting our changes. White River Junction. Did you notice something festive and colorful over the summer? They had a queer caravan. No kidding. White River Junction, they because of COVID, they <clears throat> couldn't do a public parade. So they had a caravan of vehicles with signs and flags and good idea. And how did we miss it? I know. I would have gone down with I would have gone too. And sort of acknowledging that the Samara Foundation, mm -hmm. Samara Fund, you know, is one of the few sources of funding for LGBTQ organizations, they just gave out their list of 2020 grant recipients and 12 LGBTQ plus organizations received funding, including the Chandler Center for the Arts oh. for their Pride Theater Festival. Out in the open, Green Mountain Library Consortium for its even more love LGBTQ auto book collection. Mm. Do we know about these? No, no. We may need to find them and interview them. Yeah. The New England Center for Circus Arts <laughs> for LGBTQ plus performers. 
Pride Center outright PWA Coalition Vermont Folklife Center mm. for their LGBTQ archives. But they also gave money to seniors graduating from high school who had worked on LGBTQ plus advocacy. Ah. So, and looking at... Good news. Exactly. Looking at all those things, people may be seeing notices coming up in the near future about redoing the queer town hall forums that were held statewide last year. They will be done as a virtual town hall forum. And the Pride Center in Burlington is getting in touch with local organizations for sponsorship and to send out the notice of the where, when, and how. Very quickly, Black Lives Matter and Pride Flag. Mill River United School District originally granted a request from high school senior Reese Eldert Moore to put up a pride flag and a Black Matter flag. After it was put out, after they had given the authorization, there was community pushback. So that now they're delaying doing anything. What is interesting about this is Reese is the daughter of Tabitha Moore, oh. who is the chapter president of the NAACP in Rutland. Oh. And Tabitha, in, in public statements and rallies in the past, had made this statement. Vermont isn't mostly white by happenstance. The eugenics program and escape slave laws from generations past have played their part. If we are to end systemic racism, we must remain committed. We must remain in it. So I'm just repositioning myself. She made that statement as she and her family had to leave their home because of the threats both against her and against her daughter. Yeah. So. Was the push pushback because of the Black Lives Matter or the pride flag or both? My sense is that at this point in time, they are so interwoven <coughs> that it was just in opposition to the proposal. You want to put what up over our schools? No. Yeah. Because we've been listening to um, podcast put out by the Southern Poverty Law Center. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know about it. It's called Sound, Sounds Like Hate. Yes. That takes place in Randolph. Yes. And about the controversy about putting up the Black Lives flag matter flag and uh, removing the mascot. And one of the opponents said, you've crammed the gay agenda down our throat. Now you're going to cram this down. Right. You know? So you're right. It's allied. Yep. Um, but it's time for us to push back, too. And we can do that. Yeah. Uh, may I just add something about the Gay History Month? I, last time I mentioned making gay history, and I you know, encourage people to get on their computer and look it up. They're in the eighth season. I mentioned Christopher Isherwood last time. Now the new release is an interview with Lorraine Hansberry. 1959. It's a fabulous interview, and it's a wonderful project that Eric Marcus is doing. So go to that if you wish. I recommend it. Okay. I'm ready. We've been watching a lot of podcasts, haven't we? Well, and we watched some of the New Fest films, yeah. too. One we really liked called Cured, yeah. about the uh, decision of the American Psychiatric Association mm -hmm. finally to take gayness yeah. off their list of <coughs> that um, was good. diseases. The other we didn't like so much. But, but, but there's a lot to choose from. Yeah, it's the new fest <coughs> festival yeah. that's occurring now. $13 a film. Cheaper than the movies, I guess. And you can invite 100 people. Oh, no, you can't because of You're the not pandemic. Supposed to, but, but never mind. You know. um, All right. <coughs> Georgie Giorgate Gomez, LGBTQ person, will be the first LGBTQ 
LGBTQ person to make history as a Latinx in her bid to win her run for Congress from San Diego and would be the first Latinx queer in the U.S. Congress. Yes. So we should be rooting for that one. One Million Moms threatens to boycott Oreo over LGBTQ campaign. The campaign includes cookies with rainbow filling. Yes. I'm ready. <laughs> Jean Woodsworth has, re has received, this is really interesting because this woman is running for the Commissioner of Agriculture in North Carolina. I mean, hardly a big seat. But, you know, she's gotten death threats and received uh, threats of rape uh, after she put it in up an anti-Trump video as part of her election campaign. Um, and like I said, she's running for Commissioner of Agriculture in North Carolina, but apparently... It's North Carolina. Do you know, I think you probably do, that there are 574... Candidates? I have that. Okay. I have that right here. Okay. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. I anticipate. What an eager beaver. Remember I said we would talk about the election. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. Pioneer Florida trans candidate dies of cancer. Melina Ryan Barrett, a lobbyist for women's rights, was running for the Florida Senate. And um, as we were talking about before, Biden denounces ongoing violence against transgender people. He said violence against transgender and gender nonconforming people of color is an epidemic that needs national leadership. So that was good. Amy Corey Barrett won't budge from no comment on whether she'd overturn same-sex marriage, concluding her confirmation to the Supreme Court and continue to have no comment on whether she would include, she would also overturn LGBTQ rights, including the Milestone Lawrence versus Texas ruling, just uh, decriminalizing same sex relationships, or the Obergefell ruling. Obergefell. Yeah. In favor of same sex marriage. So she's very dangerous. She's probably going to go on there and. Well, we heard uh, James Essex, the prominent legal scholar on Gay USA. And he was saying that the danger is not that they're going to overturn these landmark laws, but that they're going to chip, chip away, away at them. Like they did with abortion. Mm -hmm. Like and they're so, doing you know, with yeah, Like the social work provision right. you were talking about, little by little. But maybe not. We need to expand the court, as Andy always says. Andy, or Andy, um, Andy we need to make it bigger and more. Um, we need to expand it in order to fight some of these, if we should win the election, which I'm hoping we do. And Keith is optimistic. Yeah. Gay man provides help to LGBTQ asylum seekers in Mexico. He's a gay man from Guatemala, and he runs a project uh, called Rainbow Bridge Asylum, um, which helps with uh, the struggles of LGBTQ uh, people trying to get asylum here in this country. He and other LGBTQ migrants have lures in health care <coughs> uh, through this program. So that is really good. 32nd homicide shatters record for trans murders in a year. Brooklyn Deshana Smith was 20 years old and was found dead with a gunshot to her head in Shreveport, Louisiana. Smith was the fourth black transgender person to be murdered in Louisiana. So, and then I just want to talk, I just want to show this clip. I have more news, but I think we're running a little short on time. So I'm going to end with a clip from a movie called Gray Matters. And it's a supernatural mystery drama that follows the adventures of a band of teenage misfits in a mall in a small Scottish town. Another web series is Dyke Central. It's inclusive, diverse, and deals with mental health and substance abuse issues. But here is a clip from Gay Matters. Something is different, and I'm so not buying it about Fabiana anymore. 
Alex, you are 30 years old. Not until Saturday. So you need a roommate? Oh. Are you a little jealous? I wish they would just do it and get it over with. <laughs> How bad could it be? Could be like Brad and Angelina. What do we have in common? I'm a dyke. I'm a dyke. And technically, I used to be a dyke. <laughs> I feel triggered when I'm in a situation where I feel like I'm the outsider. May this new year of life bring you all the adventure, joy, and sex that you wish for. <laughs> Sangria? Yeah. Can't believe I'm saying this. I really like waking up next to you. So we oh. have 17 minutes. Okay. Well, I'm so. going to talk about this Kenyan film and have the spotlight be on Kenya. Uh, but then I was going to show a clip about Iran. Okay. So well, we can always come back this way if we don't. Okay. Let's talk about this Kenyan filmmaker. Um, he's directed a new documentary about a gay couple struggling for acceptance in the East African country. Uh, and this director, uh, whose name is Peter Marimi, he hopes the film industry can mirror Hollywood's progressive role in promoting LGBT rights. Um, the documentary is called I Am Samuel. It's currently at the London Film Festival. Um, and this is the latest film to depict, depict same-sex relationships in sub-Saharan Africa in the face of religious and cultural conservatism. Mr. Marimi believes that portraying more gay people on the big screen um, will move, will uh, improve LGBT uh, thinking about the issue. Um, and if there's more, if there are more films like this, then maybe LGBT rights will become a mainstream issue. Um, the role of Hollywood that was uh, has played in furthering LGBT rights in LGBTQ rights in the U.S. was really big. It cannot be understated. There's a ways to go, but uh, all of these movements are part of changing the cultural climate, and I'm increasingly thinking that we uh, progressive may be using, maybe losing legislative um, victories, but the cultural war is proceeding and minds are changing constantly. Um, he, Mr. Marimi believes that Kenya is becoming more tolerant despite the protagonists of his documentary having to move home for their own safety. The filmmaker said that they also have a plan ready uh, should the film provoke a backlash in Kenya. Now you may recall the big um, outcry that the 2018 movie Rafiki was greeted yes. by. Uh, but it's about a lesbian love affair. It was initially banned by Kenya's censors. Um, but was later overturned, went on to play to sold out audience screenings. Um, last year's British Nigerian co production, Walking with Shadows, chronicling the fallout from a romantic relationship between new, two Nigerian men, earned critical acclaim after a limited release in Lagos. I Am Samuel tells the story of Samuel and Alex a gay couple from humble backgrounds living in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, and part of a community of fellow queer men. It comes as the country sees legal challenges to British colonial era laws punishing carnal knowledge against the order of nature by up to 14 years in jail. Last year, uh, Kenya's high court upheld the laws, but activists are challenging the ruling in appeals courts. 
Remy believes, despite the legislation's historical legacy, the fight for greater acceptance of the LGBTQ community is something best left to Canyon. So <laughs> U.S. and other people Stay mind your own business. <laughs> right. His documentary ignores the ongoing legal battles and focuses instead on Samuel's struggles to win acceptance of his relationship from his own family who live on a farm in a rural part of Kenya. You mean they don't want our crazies going over there? Oh, yeah, really. Uh, this film, I hope, he says, can uh, raise consciousness because it's not an us against them. It's very nuanced. It's very balanced. It's a story about a family that is struggling with this, this issue, having a gay son. And so now, let me show you a clip about it. These are the bustling streets of Nairobi, Kenya's capital. The East African country is home to more than 50 million people, but its gay residents live in fear. Any person who has kind of knowledge of any person against the order of nature is guilty of a felony and is liable to imprisonment for 14 years. The new documentary, I Am Samuel, explores the plight of gay people in the predominantly Christian nation through the story of one man. It was uh, the struggle between him and his father accepting that he's gay. Kenya native Peter Murimi directed the film. He spoke with us via Zoom from London. Part of this story which makes it universal is that we have to be independent and take ownership of our identities and not subscribe to what's expected of us and just be who we are. The film's producer says there are many challenges in Kenya that prevent people from coming out. I do have friends who have struggled and do continue to struggle with coming out to their families because of course it's something very difficult and complicated um, to deal with, especially in a traditional African context um, where religion is at play, where the idea of the African family being under threat is at play. What exactly are the laws in Kenya about homosexuality? It's criminalized to be a member of the uh, gay community in Kenya, um, as, and it's homosexual intimacy that's criminalized by the Kenyan laws. Our character, Samuel, is not protected by class. And in Kenya, if you are poor, if you don't come from the right community, um, you, you know, the, the consequences to you are like, 10 times as much as they would be for an upper class or middle class person who is protected by class. The filmmakers say the goal of this movie was to show a positive portrayal of gay people in Kenya and to offer that community hope. In Los Angeles, I'm Anita Bennett for the Black News Channel. Good clip. Well, the crucial point that they make is that how class inflected this is that if you're gay and in an upper class, you can maybe get away with it. But unless you have the class buffer, you're really, you're really at risk. Hmm. Sounds like the British model. Mm. The British have done so much harm Damage. with these laws. Um, now, should I show my next clip now, <coughs> or should we go on to? You should do your intro for the clip, because we included that in our time restrictions. Then I'll just run down through quickly the out candidates running so they get a last minute plug. And we'll and, see where we are. And we can fade into the sunset. Oh, only temporarily. Okay, um, let's go to Iran for some uh, very sobering news from there. Just imagine an astronaut who travel to the moon. They can't live without their oxygen and their clothes. Life for a lesbian in Iran is same as this. They have to wear their mask every single day. What we see is that the homosexual person is harassed by their own family members, and by their classmates in the school. And because they cannot get help from anywhere, so they are very vulnerable to rape and to other forms of harassment. When a lesbian has to marry with a man that she doesn't like and 
Her family forced her to marry. She is being abused by her husband and for sure her family. They have uh, experienced the domestic violence, abuse and marital rape without the ability to seek uh, justice or help from the family members or from the government. A husband has the right to have sex with his wife any time they want in any shape they want and a woman can't uh, complain about it because it's the husband's right. Being homosexual in Iran is considered to be a violation of the law. Same-sex relations is punishable by death um, according to the Iranian penal code. As a lesbian, you cannot come out in Iran. If you do, they will tell you that you are sick, you have a lot of mental issues, you have to change your sex if you want to live with another woman. Outright Action International decided to create a report on the situation of lesbians in Iran in order to raise public awareness both inside the country and internationally about the plight of the lesbian community members in that country. Our ultimate goal is to pressure the Iranian authorities to respect the basic human rights of the lesbians in that country and also help the lesbian community in Iran to seek international solidarity and support uh, in their struggle for uh, equal treatment and justice. I'm a lesbian and I just want to people to know that the way that you think is unique for yourself. I don't have to think same as you. Okay, good clip. Well, it's, it's informative. It's, yeah. yeah. It's grave, but all right. So since this is our last show before the election, just a quick shout out that if you did not get your mail-in ballot, please get in touch. We with... dropped ours off today. Very good. And you signed it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> get in touch with your town clerk because they were having ballots returned because if you lived in an apartment and the apartment number wasn't included on the envelope, the post office wasn't delivering them. So there were some that had been returned. Also, at this point in time, if you're watching this, on Saturday the 24th, you need to take your ballot down to Town Hall because there isn't a guarantee that it will get to Town Hall prior to 7 o'clock on Election Day because they removed one of these sorting machines from the distribution center in White River Junction and the only remaining machine broke. So they are having to sort everything by hand. Very quick shout out, these are the known LGBTQ plus candidates running for office. And this is for the legislature. Kathleen James, who is running for a House seat in Bennington 4. Ember Quinn, who may have been interviewed on this show. House seat Chittenden 10. Bill Lippert, House seat Chittenden 4-2. Emmy, Emma, Mulvaney Stanick, House Seat Chittenton 62, Brian Sheena, House Chittenton 64, Tith Blumel, Chittenton House Seat 65, Taylor Small, could be the first openly transgender member of our legislature, Chittenton 67, John Kalaki, yes. Chittenton 73, David Glidden, House. Franklin 3-1. This is a new one. Paul Martin, House seat Franklin 5, running as a Republican. Oh. And where are these places? Where is House if, if you live in the district, you will recognize the name. Yeah, Franklin means it's in Franklin County, Bennington, Bennington County, Chittenden. Most of these are in the greater Burlington area and Milton. Mm -hmm. yeah, because time is not going to allow us to go down through all the towns within those districts. Um, <laughs> Kate Denali, who is House Lamoille 2. Emily Kornheiser, 
House Wyndham 2-1, Heather Supernot, Windsor 4-1, Brian Campion, the Senate in Bennington, and Becca Ballant, the Senate in Wyndham. So we got a roll in here. If we and and the list How is many growing. All together? Fourteen, you said last yeah. time. Yeah, fifteen then. Fifteen with the new one. Yeah. So the Republican, you know anything about him? No. No. Okay. Hmm. Other than his log cabin. I only a Facebook, not a website page, so I was not able to go in and get oh, like a it. lot of detail. <laughs> so, but this is Franklin um, Highgate area. Oh. So okay, is that known to be conservative? It is a split. It is one of those that are a split district. They okay. traditionally have sent a Republican and a Democrat. It's a two-seat district. And one of the hopes is that if you have a well-known, strong candidate of the same party to run with the incumbent, you've got a chance of picking up that seat, <coughs> okay. which we'll see what happens. All right. And we will have all these results for you when they happen, right? Next well, time? The, the next time we're taping is actually <coughs> on Election Day. Is it? Exactly, So yes. we won't know. No. Oh, no. We'll be sitting no here chewing our know. fingernails. So, our trivia question. This lesbian activist who can really kick Poet of the Year, Poet Laureate, Wisconsin, winner of the first Wicked Woman book prize. Who would that be? <laughs> for their collection of poetry, Chelsea Creek? Might be that Linda Quinn one, who, as opposed to what was being alluded to, our next interview show, which will be on Halloween, <laughs> is there we actually go. And it'll be scary. Uh, <laughs> it, it could be John Kalaki is a guest interviewer, and it may be the fourth anniversary. Yes, unbelievable. All things LGBTQ, and you might get to learn more about all of us. Yeah. I'm surrounded by trailblazers. <laughs> <laughs> so and, with And one in your seat. Thank you. Pioneers. So with that. Are we saying good night? Uh, apparently. Okay. Then I would say, remember to vote. Yes. And to resist. Thank you.